Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India second lecture uh, we have been discussing about uh, the kepler's equation and already we have done it using the theoretical method so uh, i told you that uh, i will be discussing it using uh, graphical method so i am going to discuss the graphical method today so we have two circles two concentric circles This is the center here. Okay. So, already we have observed that what is our uh, eccentric anomaly. This is the center of the circle. Let us write this as O. Okay. And of course, we are aware that if I draw two lines like this, or maybe another line a little at distance okay. so from this line we drop a perpendicular this is the line so i drop a perpendicular on the horizontal axis similarly we drop a perpendicular from this point on the horizontal axis okay. now wherever this is cutting here suppose in this case it's a so i extend it like this okay similarly this circle is being cut here in this point i have shown it by a dot there so i will draw it by some other line okay so i extend it this way and take it to this point so you can see that i have got points here in this place another point here in this place so, if I draw a radius like that and let us name this uh, say this is a 1 this is a 2. Okay. So, corresponding point 1 we are getting here in this place this is the one of the point and the next point we are getting here in this place which I am showing by dots. Okay. So, if this way I construct these points uh, and let us name these points as a small a 2 and this is a small a 1. So, I can construct these points and then connect it this way. So, if I connect it this way, so this ellipse is constructed. So, the same way it is on the left hand side this will extend toward the left and from this side also you can construct ellipse like this. Okay. 
so somewhere let us assume that focus is located here focus is located here in this point so from another color i have to use so i join this point okay another point i join here in this place so a1 and a2 and this is your f and this point i can write this as p okay and this point i will write as b2 and this point will write as b1 so corresponding angles this is theta 1 now uh, this is your theta 1 angle and similarly we have angle from this place to this place to the horizontal line this is theta 2 so now you compare with the what earlier we have discussed so we have a1 by a1 then b1 divided by small a1 b1 this we have written as a by b similarly a2 b2 divided by small a2 b2 equal to a by b so this ratio is constant why this is constant let us assume that this is the thing i wanted to discuss with you this is angle e this is the eccentric anomaly by definition this is eccentric anomaly and corresponding true anomaly is appearing here in this place this is the angle here so this i will write as e1 so corresponding to e1 we have the true anomaly theta1 and corresponding to e2 similarly the true anomaly will be theta2 so what is the where is the e2 angle so e2 angle lies from this place to this place so this is your e2 so from the graph then you can see that y sin theta 1 okay because we are measuring distances from the uh, let us write r1 equal to a1 f and r2 equal to a2 f so therefore y becomes equal to y or y1 becomes equal to r1 sin theta1 and y2 is r2 sin theta2 so our question is for getting this part okay so we have a1 b1 a1 b1 this is nothing but th this is what we are looking for okay so a1 b1 is nothing but a sin e1 where a is the radius of this circle this is a so this becomes the semi major axis of the ellipse semi major axis and b is the minor axis which is the distance from this point to this point inner circle radius 
so semi minor axis this is the inner circle radius and this one is the outer circle radius so e1 and b1 is a sin e1 and similarly small a1 b1 this gets reduced to as you can see from this place b sin e1 so where we are taking on this graph this point we have taken as o this is the point o so the point here this point will denote by some light color this is the point okay where i am putting the cursor okay so this point let us name this as c1 this is on the circle and similarly this point we will name as c2 okay so o c1 this equal to b and o c2 this is also equal to b because it's lying on the inner circle now if you divide it so a1 by a1 v1 divided by small a1 b1 this gets reduced to a by b okay. so you can see that whatever the ratio we were using earlier so this has got recovered here okay. so here once we are writing in this part y1 equal to r1 sin theta1 so this quantity is also equal to b times sin e1 similarly y2 will also be equal to r2 sin theta2 equal to b times sin e2 so this technique we are going to utilize to uh, construct uh, to derive the kepler's equation using graphical method but uh, the same way we can derive this equation also okay exactly in the same way now we go on the next page so what we are going to do we are going to find out the kepler equation using graphical method so this represents a and b i am not showing there b we can show here in this place this is b so this is your half of the the semi major axis from this point to this point this is a okay. this distance is as usual a times 1 minus e in the case of ellipse and distance from this point to this point this is 
a e this angle becomes e from the previous figure okay this we have written as m earlier we have used the symbol p for this place and this point we have written as m okay so if the satellite is suppose located here in this place which is showing by the pink so this is the initial position of the satellite and thereafter satellite reaches this position so this is the final position on this satellite so in going from and we'll name this as per uh, this point as a uh, better we should have named it as p because this is the periapsis this point is your periapsis and this point is apoapsis or we have written also as apogee and this is as perigee okay so the question is how much time it takes to go from the this position to this position so that will depend on the area swept as we have observed for the central force motion including the inverse square gravitational field that a dot equal to h by 2 this is a constant so rate of sweep of area this is constant so if we are able to find and this point let us name this point as f so this is your focus f this point is focus and area we are going to denote by delta so what we are interested in we are interested in finding out delta f a p and if we know this okay so this is the area and if i divide it by a dot so i will get the time to move from perigee to this is the time at perigee time at peri apsis and then this becomes time at p time at p so because the rate of sweep of area is constant so this total area which is fap divided by the rate of sweep of area that gives me the time this is very simple and this is the uh, technique i am going to use it but for doing this we need another uh, observation say i have this curve okay so area under this curve so this is fx here we are plotting x this is y okay so the area under this curve becomes you can write this as da equal to fx dx this is a small element dx here now suppose i scale this curve by certain amount okay so as you know this circle has been scaled to this ellipse in what ratio in the ratio a by b okay and if i write a by b equal to alpha so that means this is a factor uh, by which these are being scaled that means the if this is the radius of this is a at any point say th this is the point here shown by this green point and th this is the pink point p so m and p 
and so what we have written that m n divided by p n this equal to a by b. So, this is true for all the points on the ellipse whichever point we choose on the ellipse and if we construct like what is shown in this figure. So, we are going to get this ratio. So, that means the p n equal to b by a times m n. Okay. So, this circle is getting mapped onto the ellipse. Basically, all the points on the circle we are reducing it to the ellipse. The same way I can do here that if I take it in a particular ratio, suppose this is alpha. So, this is alpha times m n. So, if I use here the scaling alpha, so this may get reduced like something like this suppose. So, why this curve here the distance is changing? The distance is changing because your m n is changing. So, if the m n changes, so your p n also it is a changing. Okay. It is not parallel to that circle. Okay. We are not getting uh, after reduction a circle like this, rather we are getting an ellipse like this. Uh, this is very obvious you apply little bit of your sense uh, you will get this. So, here this new curve let us write this as f uh, may be uh, f 1. Okay. So, d a 1 then we can write as f 1 x d x and because this a uh, scaled curve. So, f 1 is alpha times f x d x. So, what does it this mean that this area d a has got is called to d a 1. Similarly, here in this case the area which I will show by delta m a m a n m a n or n a m I have taken it in the opposite sense. So, I will write in that sense only. So, n a m this gets scaled to n a p in area n a p. So, this is the scaling involved. So, if somehow or other we can find this area. So, we know that if I multiply this by b by a okay, because this is the scaling here okay, you can see because of this this alpha is nothing but your b by a and this multiplied by d a. So, the area n a m this will get a scale to area n a p and this is the technique I am going to use to solve this graphic uh, graphically. Okay. So, for this we uh, go to the next page and again I construct the same figure and I start working.
Okay, so the same figure I am duplicating there. So this is your A, and we are interested in finding this particular area. So the area in a m this can be written as b by a b by a times area the opposite we will write area n a p n a p as we have done here this is n a p getting mapped to this n a m is getting mapped to n a p ok. So, area n a p is b by a n a m. So, this is the first equation we are going to use ok. Thereafter we are interested in what is the area f a p this we have to find out ok. So, for finding area f a p what we can observe that f a p this equal to area n a p minus area n f p n f p. Now, the things are simple and straightforward to work out. So, few of the things I will write here and okay. so delta first let us write delta n f p area of this is a triangle n to f and to p and this is the green line here this line. Okay. So, this is the area first we are working out. So, n f p this will be equal to 1 by 2 times n f times n p. So, this is 1 by 2 and what is the quantity n f we have to decide. So, distance from here to here this is a cos e and to the focus the distance from here to here this is a e and this distance from here to here this is a and distance from this point to this point this is a times 1 minus e. So, these relations we are going to use here. So, therefore, n f is a e minus a cos e and n p as we have observed on the last page this is nothing but b sin see the uh, because this is the quantity uh, n p is quantity if your y. So, the relation we have written on the earlier page we are going to use b sin e 1 b sin e 2. So, wherever we are working with the same sign is to be used. So, this is B sign So, therefore, this becomes A B divided by 2 e minus cos e 
times sin e this is our equation number 2. We are we have used n p equal to b sin e and also from our ratio because we have m n by p n or n p uh, we have taken in the this let us write this n p as p n. So, this is p n here. I will remove this and write this as p n. So, m n by p n we know that this quantity is a by b and therefore, p n equal to p n which is nothing but your y equal to b by a m n means b by a times m n is a sin e equal to b sin e. We have used this relationship earlier. Okay. So, this is the quantity we have got here delta n f p. Now, area n a p. So, we have to get area n a p and we know that this will be a scaled area b by a times area n a m area n a m. So, therefore, this gets reduced to b by a area n a m ok. We have to work out this area n a m also. So, first let us work that So, we have to work out uh, area n a p and for that we need area n a m. So, area n a m this equal to area o a m o a m minus area o n m o n m. So, we need to work out this also. Now, o a m this will be equal to a square e by 2, because this is a sector of a circle this is the sector of a circle. So, this we are naming as 3 or uh, we can name this as 3 and this equation as 4 and this as 5. Now, area O n m this is a triangle. So, this will be 1 by 2 times O n times m n. Therefore, this can be written as O n is A cos E and uh, m n is A sin E. this is equation 6. So, we have worked out the basic things needed and thereafter we will be able to uh, derive the Kepler's relation using graphical method. So, we will continue in the next lecture with the same figure. Thank you very much.